Okay, I've got this motor back together, put a new head wire on it, and of course I put a new capacitor, because that old one is very old and I was a little worried about it. Not to mention it was made for lower mains. We have um, about 120 uh, six here for mains, but that was made for when the fan would run around 110 volts. People's mains was 110, 115, and now it's one, you know, one, uh, 20 to 130. And across the capacitor, we're generating 252 volts AC across the new capacitor, which is rated at, uh, I think it's 450 volts. The original one was rated at 330, but with the higher mains, we were pushing this one to its max. It would be well over 250, and so it would be really close to the 330 max that that metal capacitor can stand because of the high voltage today. So that's a 3.3 microfarad. The one I put in is ideal for this motor with a higher mains voltage. It's a 2.2, and here the reading's at 100 volts. So let me go ahead and shut this off because it's doing fine. It's a little warm, not hot. The uh, uh, efficiency of the motor is uh, about 48%, which is uh, the power factor, I mean, is about 48%, which is really good um, for a motor of this size. But comparing the two capacitors here at 100 volts uh, input, this is what I was getting. On the new capacitor, 219 volts across the capacitor, 0.211 volts or 211 milliamps of current um, going through the capacitor with a overall current draw on the circuit at 100 volts of 1.17 amps, which is a whole lot better than what I was having before. I was way up higher than that. Uh, so we've got the overall coming down and we got the voltage across the capacitor in a much better range. And like I said, this capacitor is rated, this new capacitor is rated at 450 volts. So we're nowhere near it. We're not even halfway. So this capacitor will last a really long time. This is the capacitor that's in there and at 100 volts RMS going in. We had 242 volts across the capacitor at just 100. So at 120, you know, we're going up 5%, uh, 20% more. This would be pushing 300, and it's only rated at 330. So that's dangerously high for today's mains. Uh, so dropping the capacitance down from 3.3 to 2.5 really helped with the top end voltage of the, on the capacitor. We got plenty of, we're not even halfway of that capacitor as opposed to 85 to 95% of this capacitor. Um, the overall current draw was a little bit less after I cleaned it with this capacitor. It was 1.15, this one's 1.17. And, um, you know, that's, that's about the same, basically. It doesn't really matter. They're under 1.38 is what I was getting before I was even up half near 100 ohms, uh, near 100 volts, I mean. So this capacitor is doing really well in this motor. This motor is doing well. It is warm. It does get hot. So um, that's a consideration. Now, I don't have it bolted together correctly, and that might have some effect on it. Also, that stator got really hot, so there's no guarantee in that this stator won't eventually short out. It did get really hot, but it is running. It's normal for some fans to get warm, especially fans with a capacitor, because you see you got high voltage. And um, so that's something to consider. Um, but... We're doing pretty good, and I think we're going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and put it back together again and uh, do a final test. But, you know, when you get this balanced better, it'll do better. You see it's 
it's turning pretty freely. You know, that's what you want. You want it to make a couple of revolutions. You don't want it to just stop, you know. But again, I, I don't even have these tight because if I tighten them, I'm not tightening them straight and they could tilt this and put pressure on the armature. This is just a test run to compare the two capacitors. Um, once I put the bracket back in there that goes in the middle, that opens this and holds it at the right depth uh, spacing all the way around when you tighten this. And that, that should drive it down even more because it'll be perfectly balanced. Okay, I got this motor back together. Um, basically, all I got to do, they put uh, ceramic caps on them, which are fine, but to ensure that they don't come off, I'm going to put electrical tape around them and a wire tie at the, bar, at the wire end, and that'll hold them on. Solder the ground wire to the case, which will give us uh, the ground. And um, anyway, I got it in. I got a new head wire in and a new line cord with a new plug. And I'm on my Variac, uh, about 120 volts. And I believe that's high. And you see it's turning fine. Nice and quiet. And then that should be low. Yep, and slowed down. So that's using that resistor. That plate was really rusted bad. So I went ahead and spray painted it just to protect it so it wouldn't rust away. And it's off. Hi. a little bit of rattle this is loose here top and bottom and, and just the vibrating of the fan will make that rattle but I think once this is screwed into whatever it was in should be fine I didn't want to put a lot of extra time in here these are rivets and um, the only way I could have fixed them would have been to draw them out put bolts and, and then had to pull the stator out to do that I didn't realize they were that loose and uh, it was just Better just to leave it the way it is, because I'm sure it's fine. Um, but that's something that could be done at some point if needed to be. But uh, once it's bolted in, I'm sure this puts pressure with these bolted to where they go, and that, that holds it in place, and it should be fine. But if it ever got real noisy, that's where the noise is going to be from. So just bear that in mind. That's a message to the owner which is working fine, which is really neat because a lot of these antique switches don't work on one of the settings or both settings. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in and uh, this project will be ready to ship back to the customer. I'll do final one final run when I got it in the case so you can see what it looks like all enclosed. Okay, I got all of these um, taped and wire tied so they're not going to come off and I put the ground wire on soldered it to the side of the can there and that'll make good continuity which I'll show you I'll do a ohm test here but this wherever this gets bolted there's so many clean spots of this that uh, wherever this gets bolted on the unit there it's going to make contact and ground the whole unit so but there's the ground wire connected and all of the other wires connected Speed coils in there if it's nice, and the switch will be. I'm going to clean it up a little bit and put it in, and uh, I'll have it back together in just a second. We'll do a final test. Okay, there it is, all back assembled. And I put a uh, rubber grommet there because this one was broken on the inside when I slid it out. It just broke off there. So I put a new one on, and it worked better anyway because I needed a bigger one for the head wire and the resistor wires to go through together. And so everything's in its place, and we're going to do final test now. Turn the power back on. Bring it up. And I'm at roughly 95 volts. It don't really matter. It's just a... Make sure everything's still running. There it goes. That's high. And that's low. Off. 
Hi, we are doing the voltage up. Here we're running, all right, we're at 115 volts. Give or take. It's low. Off. High. Again, that rattle in this. Some of that is that, some of that is motor noise. It's not completely perpendicular, it's leaning back a little, so it's not the best either, but it's it's really quiet, actually, for the age of this motor. Hi. So, we're good to go there. Okay, now, shut that off. Just pull it out. Okay, pause this a second. Zoom. All right, I have my meter here on continuity, so if I touch the things together, you hear it. Okay, so we'll put this one in the ground plug here. I'll have to hold it in the camera like that and touch the case, and there you go, you hear it. So, perfectly grounded. Nothing else will be grounded. And that's a good thing, because that would mean a short. Nothing should be grounded but this box. But once this is screwed to where it goes, you see here, on the screw, I'm just touching the screw here, it'll ground it out, ground the whole system out, and you'll be good to go. Okay, so there it is, ready to go back to its customer. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it informative, please consider giving me a thumbs up if you have any questions about these kind of motors and how to service them feel free to ask in the comment block and uh, be sure to subscribe thank you and have a blessed day